start talking. <coughs> Heard of talk before? All right, heard of talk before? Yes, sir. So you have heard talk before. What is talk? Is something which will it causes causes rotation. rotation. No, it causes rotation. Simple. All right. Force is something which causes translation, and the torque is something which causes rotation. rotation. Write it down. All right. So torque is something which will rotate an object. Now, just like force, you know, our torque also exists in this world. All right. We need to just identify it, what it is. And we need to quantify it, like best possible way to quantify it. And the way you should quantify should be consistent with the observation. Getting it? But exact quantification, whether you call this length as 1 meter or not, this length is definitely less than that length. Okay, so whatever method of quantification you take, it should be consistent. Nobody is going to ask you, why force equal to mass time acceleration but it should be consistent that if velocity is increasing quickly the force has to be more that's all you could say why not force equal to m into a square that also you know you can take it as force right but people have taken the simplest possible expression combined with mass and acceleration so similarly let's try to see the observation related to the rotation and then we can quantify what the torque should be fine now in order to have translation we need a force now if a rigid body is at rest if a rigid body is at rest do I need force for it to translate any object needs a force right and is the force required for it to rotate if the object is initially at rest I want that object to start rotating do I need a force? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I need a force, right? And larger the force, faster will be rotation, yes or no? Yes. Logical, right? So torque should be proportional to the force. Is me quite doubt any doubt in this? Alright? So torque in physics is represented by letter tau. Have you seen tau before? Yeah. <coughs> tau should be proportional to force. Okay. But you will see that have you ever uh, rotated any object like for example seesaw? Seesaw to you might have played na? Rotation is rotation, it need not be a complete circle. So this is the fulcrum. You apply some amount of force over here. Okay, this is your force. It will rotate, yes or no? Okay. Now if you apply the same amount of force over here. Will it rotate faster or slower? Slower. Slower. The force is same. Okay, so torque is not just proportional to the force. It has to do with distance as well. Okay. So the greater the distance from the axis of rotation, greater is the effect of its rotation. Yes or no? Simple. Okay. So this is let us say distance d. So the torque should be proportional to the distance. find an axis of rotation? Yes. 
right now there is a fixed axis of rotation so you can easily see that there is a axis which is visible very clearly okay now if i throw this chalk in air it rotates and then comes back do you see any axis of rotation not exactly right so basically i mean this is a convenient way of writing in your in your textbook it will be written that torque is proportional to distance from the axis of rotation but in reality you can find torque about different different points fine you can say torque with respect to a particular point is proportional to distance of that point from the force are you getting it right now i am finding torque with respect to this point are you getting it now if i find torque of this force with respect to that point the torque will be zero because distance is zero getting it so the torque is proportional to perpendicular distance from the point about which you are finding the torque all right and when you see a fixed axis you naturally tend to find the torque about that fixed axis but there need not be fixed axis all the time fine now what if i am applying force like this will this seesaw rotate it will not rotate right and if i apply like this what will happen it will rotate it will rotate but not as well as this like this right so if this is angle theta only the f sin theta component helps it to rotate fine so it not just depends on force and perpendicular distance it also depends on angle and we have found out that if angle is 90 degree the torque is maximum and if angle is zero the torque is zero okay right so that is why we need to bring that angle also in the picture so all of them have agreed that let us call the torque as distance from the point into the force in the sign of angle okay now what is this angle how do you determine this angle theta this the axis that it's theta is what is the angle between the force and the force yeah force and axis of no 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 it is the angle between the force and the distance from the axis it is the angle between the suppose from this point you finding torque so you draw a line from this to the force this is your one vector and this is your another vector getting it so it is the angle between this vector and that vector your distance vector starts from the point about which you are finding the torque okay end up right so it is r f sin theta can this torque be negative yeah. it can be yeah. negative yeah. right depending on uh, which direction you consider to be positive yeah. right it can be negative so right now at this force is the torque negative or positive <laughs> what, what do you want to be yeah. negative and positive r f sin theta tell me whether it is negative or positive r is a magnitude of distance f is a magnitude of the force we can't say the y positive right yeah no because yeah if it it is positive positive or negative why it is how can you no because you see here length will be positive f will assume it to be positive and theta here will not give you a negative sign theta okay sure yeah but why does it have to be Required. Oh, you keep quiet then. Okay, keep quiet. Others, what do you think? Negative or positive? Well, what is angle theta? It is acute or obtuse here? Then positive. Theta is greater than one. It greater than ninety uh, or less than ninety? Are you sure? Yeah. No, it's no, so yeah, theta. This is one vector. This is another vector. So this is the angle actually. This theta is not that theta actually. So, but this tail is not tail. This is this is a tail, and here is the tail for the force. So, this is the angle. 
tail to tail or head to head both will give you the same thing fine second period again how do you find angle between the two vectors you are not there you have not watched the video also huh this is r f into sin of angle between r and f why it should be angle between r and f because i want to represent it as a cross product otherwise i will not be able to put it as a vector product all right so i want to write torque as r cross f so if this is the definition right now the torque is what negative or positive so this is the torque and here something like the location from opposite to the plane for x and c for the rotative then it becomes negative yeah but if you have just one force it never be negative right so you have you need many so the definition is anti clockwise positive i think Okay, so there there should be some sign convention. Write down. We usually take anti-clockwise to be positive. The sense of rotation in anti-clockwise to be positive, and sense of rotation in clockwise to be negative. Okay. So over here, R cross F is in which direction? This is R. This where R cross F I have to find out. R is like this. and f is so i have to align your my right hand in the direction of the first vector and then curl in the direction of second vector r cross f is into so this is clockwise or negative torque getting it so curl in the direction of the angle so the force see if suppose this is vector a and this is vector b how do you find a cross b align your hand in the first vector and then curl in the direction of second vector so the thumb is a cross b b cross a is align in b and then go towards a okay fine so this is your torque it depends on perpendicular distance sorry it depends on the distance the force and the angle between the distance and the force is it clear clear yeah? okay now i can write the torque r into f sin theta what is f sin theta component of force which is perpendicular to the distance are you getting it so i can write this as r into f perpendicular all right and in this chapter usually we don't rely on the vectors to determine the uh, to determine the sign of the torque we just use our sense of rotation or just look at it if you take that dash to be positive this will be negative so likewise one sense of rotation will be positive other sense of rotation will be negative okay along a single axis only two sense of rotations are possible okay so r cross perpendicular distance perpendicular component of force and then torque can also be written as r sin theta into f what it is r sin theta is what perpendicular component of distance perpendicular component of the distance from the force this is the torque so so physically if you look if you look at mathematically this is the formula okay physically it is a perpendicular component of force that causes the rotation and it is a perpendicular distance of the force that causes the rotation are you getting it okay so uh, 
हाँ सो बेसिकली इफ द फोर्स हैज नो परपर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द एक्सेस देन द टॉर्क विल बी जीरो इट विल नॉट रोटेट एट ऑल फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस फोर्स this line of force was passing through the axis its perpendicular distance from the axis is zero, zero. so it, there will not be any rotation are you getting it similarly if uh, uh, let's say this door let's say this is a door this door can rotate about that axis if i apply a force like that this force if i extend will cross the axis you cut the axis what what is its perpendicular distance from the axis it's going to be that no. what is the perpendicular distance of this force from the axis tell me that how much is this perpendicular distance from the axis so ye kya so the breadth of the yeah, yeah. breadth of the room what you are saying this रोटेशन प्लीज राइट डाउन or a line of force a line of force if passes through the axis a line of force if passes through the axis creates zero torque about that axis creates zero torque about that axis Okay. Any doubt still now? If you have to find out the torque, take the line of force and extend it. Okay, extend it and draw a perpendicular about which you are finding the torque. That is the perpendicular distance. That into the force is your torque. Clear? And suppose you know the perpendicular component of the force. Take the perpendicular component of force and multiply with the distance. That again will give you the same torque. Okay, fine. 